Hello and welcome to IoT Design Week 2020. My name is Rachel Bedore and I'm here with Clifford Swartz. Hey, how you doing Rachel? Good, how are you? I'm good. This is my first time on the stage. Normally I'm back in the booth, but I'm very excited. And yeah. today's not the only first for me, it's also... It's also Home Automation Day. The first day of IoT Week. The first day, yes, the, sorry, the first day of IoT Week. Um, so we have tons of stuff all week, uh, but today is Home Automation Day, and we have a special guest Skyping in from Norway is Johan Lofstad. Hi, no, no, hi Johan. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. Glad to be yeah, able to talk to you good. today. Uh, Johan, could you tell yeah, us more this. about what you do? Sure. I'm a product marketing engineer here at Microchip, and the project I've been working on lately is uh, something we call a home automation kit. Nice. Uh, and that's something we're going to talk a bit more on later today. Cool. Yes, and I believe we'll even be giving some of those away. So why don't we bring it back to the booth, um, and they can tell you a little bit more about the, how to win a free sample and what we'll be talking about today. Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing? We got uh, Nate doing well. Morning, doing well. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I'm Wayne. You guys may have seen me, and it's been a while since uh, Edwin Romero has been here on, yeah. the, on the live stream. We, I came we, back by request. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Popular thank demand. you for being here. It's, it's great having you in the booth. Yeah, it kind of feels weird to be, be behind the scenes here, but I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> right, so are you excited to? Definitely, I'm ready to take questions. Oh man, on the chat. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're here to tell you a couple of things. Just a little bit of ground rules before we get started. So the first thing is we are actually multicasting right now on several different platforms. We're on YouTube, we're on LinkedIn Live, and we're also on Facebook. So hello to the few hundred of you that are all chatting with us. Um, we're actually looking at your chats right now. Edwin will be, uh, will, will be responding to your chats, and he'll also be pulling questions from the chat so that we can ask Johan, and we can ask Clifford, and we can ask Rachel um, as we progress through the, uh, th through the day. Second thing is that we're talking about the home automation kit, right? So we're going to be giving away five home automation kits as free samples. Um, the, way you can, you, the way you can get one of the kits is basically by filling out a survey that, uh, that Edwin will drop into all of the chats at the end of the, uh, of the live stream. And I'll, we'll, we'll basically tell you when we're, we're ready to go. We'll drop a, drop a, a survey link, and you can go in fill out the survey, the first five of you will win, uh, will, will, will receive home automation kits. So it's going to be great. Um, looking forward to talking with you guys and uh, back to you guys over in the uh, it, over in the stage. Yeah, we're excited to hear about the topic, IoT. Yes, uh, and I'm so excited about home automation. I recently bought some of my first connected appliances, and I was like, oh, I want everything in my house to be connected, because right. um, I always forget to turn things off. Uh, so it's always very nice. Um, and yeah, do you have any connected appliances in your house? So I don't currently, but I want one. I have a little garden in my back patio, and I'm always forgetting to water, especially in the hot Arizona sun. So having something that could automate that would be a lifesaver. Yeah, I believe that. Um, so to, before we, uh, to get started, um, Johan, could you tell us a little bit about what is home automation? What does it mean when we talk about home automation? Sure. So how I think about home automation is to connect what you would traditionally call dumb appliances together. Uh, the example I like to give is uh, with light bulbs. Like everybody has light bulbs in their house. And certain things you always do, like there's some things you want to automate. For instance, when you go into a room, you want the lights to turn on, right? And when you leave a room, maybe you want to turn them off. Uh, and it's all about, in home automation, there's different events that create different procedures. And you make everything talk together. As I said, if you, uh, for instance, have uh, as I said, a motion, uh, <coughs> motion detector, that could automatically uh, turn on the lights. And maybe you have a coffee timer. Like it starts your uh, coffee pot at 8 in the morning on a Monday. Right, right. So nice. That's the basics of it. So, Johan, what are the important considerations for our home automation IoT design? What things are we looking at? Sure. I'd say the first and most important thing, it is IoT week after all, is that it's connected. You can't really get anything off a node or get anything into a node. A node, on, for instance, a coffee pot would be a node, without having it connected to some kind of network. That could be a local network in your house, 
you often see like local hubs, uh, or you can have it in a cloud network connected to the internet. Uh, that's one thing. Um, another thing is also <clears throat> you have the smart element. It has to actually have some code, uh, kind of logic. If not, it's not uh, home automation and it's just uh, a light bulb. And the last thing is uh, security. Imagine you're having a, a door lock, a home automated door lock, for instance, that you can open with your smartphone. You really don't want anyone that's not uh, authorized to access that. Right, because then right. it can just open the door to your apartment. You don't want that. No, of course not. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that on the home automation kit, it comes with the AVROT board, which uses Wi-Fi to connect to the cloud. So why would somebody decide to use Wi-Fi versus a different home automation uh, connectivity option? Sure, that's a good question. Uh, mostly, I'd say the biggest benefits of Wi-Fi is uh, two things. Number one, it's already in your house, most likely. If you're thinking about like integrating home automation into your house, you probably have Wi-Fi coverage. If not, I'd start there. Uh, the second is throughput. You can actually transfer a lot of data with Wi-Fi if you have a stable connection. So, for instance, if you have a security camera, uh, which is a standard uh, home uh, home automation appliance, then you can stream that data easily off uh, of the camera without any any lag. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So, what about all the other wireless uh, connection protocols, BLE, Zigbee, MyWi? Why would somebody want to look into something like that? Well, there are of course. Uh, like disadvantages and advantages with every protocol you want to just choose. One of the big uh, disadvantages maybe of Wi-Fi is we've all been at our grandparents and they've just put their router like in the in the basement in some cabinet down there. Right. And <laughs> you want to have Wi-Fi in the attic, maybe you want the, your smart light bulb in the attic. There's just no coverage. Uh, if you, for instance, use Zigbee, which is a mesh protocol, every node would uh, refresh the signal. So if you have uh, a light bulb like in the uh, in the basement, and then you have one in uh, the living room, and then one in the attic, then the signal will actually tra transfer through the light bulb in uh, in the living room before reaching the attic, and you actually get a, uh, a like a sped up network that kind of uh, in, uh, like improves the signals of uh, each other. Nice. Okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I have terrible Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's cool. Mesh network. So, <laughs> always good to have other <laughs> options. Um, yeah. And we talk a lot about, especially with this home automation kit. We talk a lot about the cloud, and I know you're going to demo this later. But can you tell us a little bit about what the cloud brings to home automation and why it's important? Definitely. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions out there now is, oh, cloud is anonymous, uh, synonymous with uh, cloud storage. You upload some data to some uh, cloud provider, and you have it in all your devices. And that's one type of cloud. But very often, when we're talking about IoT, it's more about cloud computing. Instead of having your little microcontroller perform, let's say, a very resource-heavy task, you just send the command to the cloud and say, hey, can you compute this for me? And then the cloud does this computation and sends that result back to the microcontroller. Uh, that enables you to do super powerful things with a relatively small device. OK. Yeah, that's really cool how you can use a uh, the cloud to make a really powerful device. Um, just just a shout out, I think we do work with other cloud providers. So the um, AVR IoT board that Johan is uh, using in the home automation kit connects with Google Cloud. Um, but we also work with Amazon and Azure, who will be on on Wednesday. Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we'll have Web Things, which is kind of an alternative to a typical cloud provider. So right. definitely stay tuned. So we'll be talking more and more about the cloud throughout the week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about the home automation kit? We've been ha kind of hinting at it, but I think we, we might want to go a little bit deeper into what it is. Yeah, yeah, you show, showed an image of it, but uh, let me transition here to what it actually contains. Uh, as you can see here um, on my screen here, this is the uh, AVR RT board. So this is where we again have a, a, a Wi-Fi module and uh, an AVR and a crypto chip. So it's, it can easily be connected to the Google Cloud servers or AWS, and as you said, Azure down the road. Um, you also get 
Oh, give me a second. This, which is a driver for a stepper motor. Nice. So you get these three things. And the reason we chose these three components for the kit is you get motion. And through motion, you can pretty much automate a lot of things, right? Uh, <clears throat> because as long as you get something to rotate, you can something get something to move. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in addition to <clears throat> just the contents of the kit itself, you'll also be getting a bunch of uh, user guides. We have three. We have a bunch of videos uh, that all walk you through how to get started with the IT and home automation in general. That sounds like a great. I I hope everybody is hoping to get that free sample because that's a pretty pretty, pretty robust cool. kit. It can Absolutely. Allow you to do a lot of different things. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's uh, a very good way to get started with IT. I'd say it easy walks to get you started. through everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the, <coughs> yeah. Do you want to show us a little bit about? Uh, I know you brought a couple of demos. Um, do you want to get started showing us that right now? Is that okay? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Just give me a second. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so the first thing I just want to mention with the um, with the the home automation kit is um, <coughs> that it actually takes you from uh, it assumes no prior knowledge. A lot of people find uh, it quite intimidating with the cloud because it's actually a lot is going on and that's what we're trying to do with such a kit. And one of the things we're showing in the kit, like one of the user guides or applications, uh, example applications, is a weather clock. So I think uh, I could probably show you guys what the weather clock is. Cool, cool. yes, we'd love to see. Okay. Whoa. So this is the weather clock. I dig it. Uh, nice. Uh, so what it really is, as you can see here, it's a clock, but instead of having time on the dials, it has weather. And all these small numbers here, that's temperature in Celsius. So I made this one in Trondheim, in Norway, so it goes from minus 5 to 15. I don't <laughs> think that's applicable for Arizona, but uh, <laughs> it works here. Uh, so <clears throat> this is all explained in the, in the user guide, if you guys just want to have a look. Will, uh, there's a link in the description of the uh, of the different live streams. So I think we just um, also one more thing you get <coughs> we have with it is voice control. Uh, so we're using a Google Nest here to make the Google <coughs> sorry the uh, weather clock to show a different location. I think it's the moment to set on Oslo, but we can try to put it on Phoenix maybe. Sure. Uh, okay, Google, talk to Microsoft weather clock. Here's the test version of microchip weather clock. What would you like the weather clock to do? Forecast for Phoenix. It seems like we'll have a bit of a slow Wi-Fi. We're loading. We'll see. Yeah, it's loading. And the and so. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nice. There you go. So partly cloudy. Partly didn't move that far, but it's yeah. It's usually <laughs> sunny, but I think it was partly cloudy. Right, right. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. And if you and if, and if somebody follows a guide and they do this at home, can they can they do their own range of temperatures, right? Or or do they have to stick with minus five to positive fifteen? Sure, you can choose your own temperatures. Okay. All part of a configuration you can do. It's all described in the in the user guide or actually a video series as well. Nice. Oh, nice. So lots of information, but very customizable. That's really useful. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really it's, cool. it's, super, <laughs> it's designed to teach you how to do a cloud application. So we're describing as much as we can. That's, yeah, I definitely recommend everybody check that out um, because it's a great way to get started. And um, all of Johan's material is like really detailed, um, really easy for people who are just starting out or have a little bit of experience. So right. um, really nice. Oh, it sounds like we may have a question from one of our viewers. Uh, Wayne? Actually, uh, you, you all have been absolutely stunning in terms of the, of the number and like quality of questions you've been asking lately. Um, Edwin and I are actually having a little trouble keeping up, but yeah. we do have a couple. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, that you know, uh, I I would I thought were great questions. I wanted to kind of get you guys to um, to, to give your thoughts on them. Um, first one is uh, Esha uh, asked if the IoT board has a mic input. And I know the answer to that question, but I kind of wanted to, you know, maybe toss that around, um, you know, for for possibilities. Johan, do you want to answer that one? Sure. Uh, at the moment, no, it does not have a mic input. Uh, it only the, the microphone we saw there was the Google Nest, which 
it's connected to uh, the Google Cloud, which when I uh, gave a voice command, it sent that to the IT board. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. So you're not directly even speaking to the AVR IoT home automation kit at all. You're actually no. talking to. That's really cool, yeah. and it really shows how we can add so much um, power and so much computing onto just a, using just that's a very also small how it is with, with home automation as well. Like you have often, that, especially Google Nest is what we call like a, a hub for your uh, home, uh, like smart appliances. And you can give, uh, it's a very common way to give inf <coughs> commands to the different appliances in the house is through voice command to that or maybe an Amazon Alexa. Right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was a great question. Thanks, thanks for the question. Do we have some more, Wayne? Um, have a lot of people actually asking where they can get the kit from. Ah. Um, you know, and uh, you know, for, for that one, uh, you, you guys can answer that one. Actually, uh, everyone has a couple. Of yeah, I have one right now I could give you. Um, a question came uh, from. Oh, sorry, I missed the name here. You're good. Is it possible to migrate from AVR to PIC with the IoT board, the code? Because currently he says he has a uh, PIC version of it. Just wondering if he can migrate over that code that you're using, demonstrating on. You on? Um, yeah, I can't. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, how much work it is. To, it's not directly translatable. Right. Uh, yeah. There is a firmware for both the AVR and the and uh, the big boards, which are quite similar, but uh, you can't really just take an application from an AVR over to PIC at yeah. this moment, no. Right, right. They are very similar, though. I know I've played around um, with it, so the code structure is very similar. So if you pro if you remember how you program the AVR, you could program in the same way um, at the same lines. It's just that you can't just drag Copy the base. hacks file of over. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and then, oh. and then how, how do we find the home automation kit? Do you want to answer that one, Johan? How would somebody sure. go buy it if they didn't win the free sample? So you can either just, um, we have a list of all the components. You can go, go and buy all those three. It's readily available components. Or you can go to DigiKey, uh, which uh, are selling the kit uh, on our website. Yeah, and, and from what I understand, it's a DigiKey exclusive, the kit? Yep, yep. Uh, yes, some, some of you our, can only buy it. Some and some of our audience members have actually found it, but I wanted to kind of make sure yeah. to get that out. Yes, you you can go and buy all the components if you'd like. And that question came yes. from Jimmy on YouTube. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks. I have another question. If you guys have a second, sure. Uh, question came um, from Sebastian. He's wondering if mm. there's a microchip. Does microchip offer a cloud service to customers to develop on? And I think you guys answered kind of this one. Yeah, maybe we can uh, cover it again. So. Johan, do you want to speak a little bit to that? If microchip offers a cloud service? Mm -hmm. Just to develop on. To, when you get your board and uh, to prototype, it sounds like he's wondering if we could. Um, there's somewhere they could test their code and kind of play around with their uh, development board. So it, it depends on what you put in a cloud service. At the moment, we're using, for instance, is, is the Google Cloud. Uh, but we have made a landing page, which makes it a lot very easy to get started with mm -hmm. uh, the IT board without having to put up a full fully fledged uh, project. That's right. the same for AWS as well. Yeah, and that's one of the uh, the key, you know, points for for the, you know, the AVR and PIC IoT boards, uh, the fact that you do have that landing page that's been uh, that's been constructed that allows you to basically to get, get to get data up to the cloud and see that. Right. Yeah, we call it sandbox, like it's a, sandbox a place to explore and then when you're ready, you migrate to a private account, which I think Johan, you're um, your tutorials actually show people how to do both, so how to use the sandbox, and then also how to migrate to a private Google Cloud account. Um, and yes. then it's the same situation for Amazon. And um, uh, and then, yeah, um, tune in for web things, because that's kind of interesting and a little bit different. So definitely join us on Thursday to learn more about that method. Cool. Um, so we don't necessarily have a microchip branded cloud that I know of, but we do have a lot of opportunities for you to get started using these cloud providers that we work with without paying anything. Right. Yeah, they can use it on AWS, right, Rachel? Yes. Okay. They can. Cool. Yeah, that's one question. Thank you. Um, they, do you have yeah, to buy just a uh, just a note or two? Let's say you have bought the AVR uh, Google branded board. It's no problem converting that to an AWS board either. There's mm -hmm. a provisioning tool on our website. Nice. Yeah. Just for your, for your information. So you can buy a different board, or you could um, reprovision a Google Cloud board to work with AWS. So we have lots of different yes. options um, for that. Cool. Cool. 
So um, dialogue flow, I think, is where we're at. Yeah, I yes. think, yeah. Uh, so we had just brought this up a little bit of how you're not actually talking into the AVR, yeah. you're talking to the cloud, kind of, um, which I think is really cool. Very cool. Uh, so, Johan, can you tell us a little bit about how you set that up? Sure. Uh, just before I start talking about that, if you guys want to know, like, in detail, how you can do this with your own Google Cloud uh, platform, there is a user guide online um, for this. It's called Voice Control with Google Assistant. Uh, you can get it by going to the IoT, ABR IoT ports uh, landing page on microchip.com. And how we do this is by using something called uh, Dialogflow, which is a product from Google. And I uh, <coughs> actually to implement that part uh, where I, like there is no lines of code to actually get the voice command through. It's all uh, a very nice interface you can set up by giving it example phrases, such as I've said, I'll look for words such as forecast and weather and try to extract uh, location information from that. And then that's sent to the Google Cloud, which is, again, processes that and extracts the relevant information. Uh, actually, in this uh, situation, it actually finds out what location we want. It uh, connects to an external weather provider, downloads that, and it converts it to a clock hand position, for nice. instance, like 90 degrees. And that's what's sent to the AVR board or the okay. IT board. Can you use any language, or do you have to set that up? How, how does it work? How would I add Norwegian? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, <laughs> That's actually very simple. You begin with uh, whatever language you want. Normally, you'd start with English, uh, and then you can just add more languages, and you just have to replicate those train, training phrases. Nice. Uh, cool. Yeah. I tried it for with um, uh, three languages. I tried it with English, uh, German, and Norwegian, and it all worked quite well. Oh, nice. good. Cool. Good to know. Absolutely. So, uh, Johan, could you talk to me about how the weather clock is implemented in the cloud in a sort of broad sense? Sure. I already like uh, poked a bit on it, like with the dialogue flow and how that voice control thing works, and that there's actually, as I said, no computation at all about um, like there's some computation on the IoT board, but most of that is in the cloud. Again, we're talking about cloud computing. Um, <clears throat> the only thing the AVR board does in itself, as I said, is get a clock hand position like 90 degrees, 180 degrees. It actually doesn't know it's showing weather. It could be, I don't know, a football match score. Uh, it's in the cloud, uh, in the what we call for a uh, cloud function in, uh, in the Google Cloud Platform that actually is triggered whenever a dialog log event occurs, which connects to an external provider, provider downloads an XML file, parses that, and figures out, OK, uh, in this case, it's going to, I don't know, 23, 24 degrees. Right, right. Okay, so that's kind of how you're able to have such a complex application run on the simple AVR microcontroller, um, which is really cool if you think about adding scale, like having a bunch of these edge nodes. That sounds like it'd be really beneficial. And it's really limitless. Like, how much computation you really want to do is all about what cloud you're using, right? right. Because all is done in the cloud. That's as long as your uh, AVR can, or PIC, or microcontroller can receive and send Wi-Fi messages, then you're good to go. That's cool. That's really cool. Why, why a stepper motor? What's yeah. the benefit? So I'm, yeah, I come from like a software background, so these things always really interest me of like, why would we choose a stepper motor over a different motor, and what's the benefit in this application, like the weather clock of using the stepper motor? Sure. One of the biggest advantages of the stepper motor in such applications is what we call for uh, an open loop. So let me elaborate. Uh, Normally, if you have, for instance, I don't know, a brushless DC motor, uh, you put some uh, voltage on it. It rotates so and so uh, far, and you have kind of an idea how far it rotated. But it won't rotate exactly how far you want it, right? It might rotate a bit further than it should, or a bit uh, uh, less uh, than it should. Right. Uh, and then over time, that offset. Like, it sum it up, right? For every time you move the motor, that arrow just increases and increases and increases. And then you need a sensor and what we call a closed loop to feed back that sensor information in order for it to point at the right location. With a stepper motor, 
it's a, what we call a finite amount of states. It can only be in a certain positions. It can't be in this between position. And then you don't need a sensor uh, because you can do, as I said, open loop. You don't need any feedback. You don't need a sensor to give you information about where the motor is located. Right. And that's quite cool. Then you don't need a sensor and you can do quite precise uh, motor Very control. reliable motor control. Yeah. Nice. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, and so that's why that's so nice that that's included in the kit because um, right. it is so useful to have that. So it's speaking. quite versatile too. It's a very a lot of applications you can uh, you can do about it, and that's what kind of what we want as well. We want everybody to buy the kit to like <laughs> make your own application. <laughs> right, like, right. Really let your imagination flow. Well, cool. So while we're talking about the kit, Johan, could you show us how we'd get started with the kit for those lucky viewers who receive one? Sure, we can do that. Um, so, um, give me a moment. go. Um, so let's say um, uh, you just bought the kit <coughs> and you plug it in. There we go. You then get a little something here called clickme.hdm. We open that. I've already configured the Wi-Fi in this board. You can see there's a blue light. Right. Which means it's connected to our Wi-Fi network. Uh, and that's it. You're online. Nice. Uh, there's two sensors on it. There's a light sensor and a temperature sensor. Right, right. Uh, which we can see here. And let's try to block out the light sensor, shall we? Oh, we see quite a big dip. Oh, so that's, wow, that's, that's really, really fast. fast. Yeah. yeah, that's so fast. Yeah. So this is live streaming to the Google Cloud. Right. Uh, we could have this board in Chandler, and I could having this graph in Norway. That would be no problem. Right. Yeah. So nice. we, we can check in on you and make sure you're not too cold in right, a right. way. Right, right. The temperature's okay. <laughs> yeah. I should probably check in that you guys are not too warm. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Goes both ways. <laughs> wow. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. So what's the control your device section? Can you show us that? Sure. So the kit is not just the, uh, the, uh, the board, right? It's also this uh, click here and the motor. So if I just connect this one right here and I put this thing here on. So there we go. So with the uh, with the kit you're also getting source code. We won't go through the source code. You can find us an Atmos start. Uh, by going to start at and uh, looking for AVR RT VG sense node with step or two click example. Mm -hmm. And you just export the project and you have it in start. Uh, and then you can, we open the studio. I already programmed the, uh, this kit with it. And it comes with a driver for the stepper motor. Right. So to illustrate that, you can just enter what commands you want to send it. Let's say run, Let's see what happens. Nice. Oh, there it goes. Cool. There it cool. goes. Nice. And I can stop it. Maybe I won't. And all this code is on start, so you don't have to. All is on start. OK. I, I literally just downloaded it now and pressed play. OK, cool. Uh, and this is <coughs> already with just this code. Oh, you're really it's going the other way. already <laughs> ready cool. to make a lot of applications, right? Right, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh. And I'll be quicker again. Nice. Wow, that's so responsive. That's really cool. And like you were saying, I can totally see how people could use their imagination to do this in a lot of different ways. Right, um, yeah. It's not just the weather clock or even really, I mean, it's for home automation, but I'm sure you could use it for a lot of different things. Any number so of things, pretty yeah. Cool. yeah. No. I think we may have another question from one of you guys. Uh, Wayne? Yeah, you guys started talking about uh, you know useful for other applications. Someone um, actually asked a question from uh, the LinkedIn uh, live chat. Thank you Whoa. for those of you on that chat. By the way, like we have um, not not to scare you guys, but we're 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 over 500 people that are watching us right now. Good. So it's um I'm I'm gonna be honest. It's a uh, it's a lot of work back here. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to keep track of uh, all these questions coming in. Understandable. Um, so yeah. I'm very happy with the audience. Yeah. Uh, 
So, so one of the questions was about the the, the LinkedIn chat question was mm -hmm. about uh, you know whether it's applicable. The, you know, something like this can be applicable for smart lighting applications. And uh, I was thinking, wow, that's that's right up our alley. Um, you know, do you, you care to to have a discussion about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, Yohan, right. you mentioned that basically earlier, but if you'd like to expound on it a little bit more, um. Sh sure. Like you, again, smart lighting. It's all about what kind of smart lighting are you doing. Uh, if you're just talking about smart lighting, as I said, like you have different light bulbs around the house, sure, you could use something like this. Uh, again, it's uh, it uses Wi-Fi, so you have to think about uh, do I have the coverage in the in the house? Maybe a mesh solution is a better solution. Uh, it really depends on what kind of smart lighting system you're making. Mm -hmm. I, I, no one of your examples was using the like blinds, right? Uh, like smart yeah. window because of the motor. Right. Yeah, so that would be also, I mean, I guess it's not really like turning on a light, but it's putting down the yeah. shades if it's sunny, I think. Yeah, in so. Norway that's actually quite uh, quite useful because here it gets uh, during the summer. Uh, it really doesn't get dark. It's uh, <laughs> bright sunlight all the day. Right. So if you can have some way of maybe shutting down the blinds when it's time to go to bed to kind of mimic that natural uh, send out. Right. So, yeah. Oh, that's, so that's one even, of us. That's you, nice. Yeah. As you touched on, Rachel, that's one of the example applications that's uh, available. Nice. Cool. Uh, do we have any more questions from you guys? Um, I think Edwin has. Yeah, one I have a question here. Oh. Uh, CC was asking, can you use the board on your own server? To, you know, instead of having using the Google or the um, AWS one. Like the board itself, definitely. Uh, like. The firmware that comes with it comes with a full-on Wi-Fi stack and everything, but you will, it will require a bit of tinkering uh, right. to get it to work. It's, it's made for the cloud application. So it's, if you want this streamlined, plug it in and it works, then no, you can't use your own server. But if you're willing to dig down in the C code, uh, you can just use the Wi-Fi driver that's on there and yeah. send yeah. Wi-Fi messages. Perfect. Sure, cool. it's no problem. Right. One last question. One last one. Uh, Jared uh, says he's too lazy to Google. <laughs> 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 what what chip is on that clickboard? Do you know, Johan, off the top of your head? Yes, he does. I don't know off the top of my head. No. <laughs> it's a, it is a separate two click, uh, and so I'm afraid you'll have to Google that. All right. Wow. Oh. Sorry, Jared. Yeah. And which which module? Oh, the separate, oh, the separate two, two, click. two click. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, I don't he know. He could either. just ask his Google. <laughs> you could just ask, ask Google. Ask Google. Google. Yeah. Ask your Google Home. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jared, I tried. Oh. All right. Thanks for the question, though. That was good. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Good, good question. Um, and but even just running that, it should be pretty easy um, since Johan has it all set up in Start, so you can just import the drivers. Right. Um, so a little bit less work uh, and that's it's pro probably kind of impressive that Johan doesn't know the name of the chip when he's been <laughs> working with it for so long <laughs> says a lot about how easy it is to point. use um, great where are we now um, so okay so how many you have written a lot about the home this is like the best supported right. kit I've ever seen <laughs> So do you want to go through, I, you've mentioned a couple different guides. We have some posted in the YouTube um, description. But do you want to go through, Johan, just a couple of the different things you've written and the videos you've created um, to support people as they use the kit? Oh, sure. Uh, let's go over to the internet again. Uh, so the first thing, if you go to Microsoft.com, Development Tools, Product Details, and AC16, 160, you'll find the AVR IT VG development board, uh, which is the board that comes with the kit. And in here, we have a uh, getting started with the AVR home automation kit. This is where I recommend getting started. It's getting started in the name. Uh, cool. And it's an introductory guide to how to connect it uh, to Wi Fi, uh, uh, how to get the code here, how to configure the code, how the firmware works. Uh, a bit on how the scheduler in it works, uh, some basic step promoter theory, and everything really you need to get started with it. Uh, and you can just jump over stuff that, if you're already very familiar, for instance, with this is how an, what's called an H bridge works. If you already know that, just skip it. Um, we have two examples, which is the weather clock and the automatic blinds. So the weather clock, 
it's really all about how to make uh, like a cloud application. It's really focused on cloud. Um, so we go through what the different cloud modules in Google Cloud is, how you can use them to set up your entirely your own application. Um, and then lastly, or not actually not lastly, we have uh, the automatic blinds, which I just discussed, how we can integrate the automatic blinds with this. And then the voice control with Google Assistant, which is how do you integrate uh, voice assistants nice. uh, into your Google Cloud project, and in this case, the AVR board. And then there's a couple of videos uh, that's linked in the description uh, below. Uh, you can find them. If you're on YouTube, you're already on the correct channel. You'll find them in the uh, home automation uh, kit uh, playlist. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And then there's the Thank you. So what other IoT kits do we have? So we have one coming out tomorrow. So I'm not supposed to say what it is, but stay tuned. Um, <laughs> Exciting stuff coming on that. And then I'm also, I have a couple here. We made these cool boxes. Um, you, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, it's the PIC BLE and AVR BLE development boards. Um, super easy to use. They have a, a BLE, um, a, a BLE, module. yes, module, thank you. <laughs> a BLE module, um, a microcontroller, um, accelerometer, some really fun stuff. And what's really cool is that you can just pull out your phone um, if you use the light blue app by punch through, uh, which a lot of people doing BLE do, so right. it's kind of cool. Um, we have to work with punch through on this. They're great. They're a small, a small design firm um, and really smart and really good at apps. So it's really fun to work with them. And so we have a custom interface in there. Um, when you open the app, you just click on the like, it'll come up when the board's plugged in as like a microchip logo. And then you just click on it, and you get this custom interface where you can see the accelerometer data, right, toggle right, right. the LEDs. It's very similar, actually, to AVROT, to how you're going to the cloud. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's the BLE version of that. Um, so that's really fun. And cool. then, uh, yeah, so I highly recommend that. Actually, I was giving a couple of these away on AVR Freaks. Ah. Um, I, think, I think I offered five, and I think we sold out. But um, I'll put a comment in, give out five more. Nice. So, um, very generous. Just add your name in uh, to AVR Freaks if you find the post, and uh, we'll send you one. Cool. So I can't promise there will be with the cool box. I'll try. Right. But uh, our first our first run through doesn't have the neat box. But Aww. it is pretty cool. It, it's an origami box. It's like a <laughs> it's like a hobby. Unfolds and yeah. Oh wow. Oh oh yeah. <laughs> Useful information on the inside. It looks like. Yes, a pinout. It's wow. everything you need in a box. Love it. Man. So entertaining. Good job, whoever put that together. Um, <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah. So do we have uh, more questions for Johan in the booth? Well, gosh. Um, to be honest with you, we could probably ask questions for the next like 45, 50 minutes, but I don't think we think we have that much time. And uh, what time is it, what time is it over there right now, uh, Johan? It's what's was it? Uh, it's yeah, about it's six o'clock or something. Uh, yeah, uh, seventeen forty. Okay, that's right. that's yeah. that's uh, that's not too terrible. Yeah, we'll so five forty. We'll keep you up for another couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, one, uh, we have a question from uh, I think Shivam over in LinkedIn chat. Cool. Um, rather than voice command, what other controls can we use? And uh, so I, I'm I'm kind of interested to know, you know, how how cool can we get with this? What yeah. do you think? Yeah. Well, it's all about as long as you can send something to the Google Cloud, some sort of uh, interface. It can be Motion like detector or like? Yeah, motion detector is a good example. Uh, if you can uh, connect a motion detector, you can use probably use a, a motion detection click sure. and put it on a, a, one of our IoT boards. And that could be like your second node, which then can send a, a message. Right, right, right. You could also, what actually the, uh, what the weather clock guide actually describes is uh, to have this on a schedule. So, for instance, you want to have like the weather clock at your door when you're about to leave, uh, and it can bro like <laughs> instead of having the weather right now, it shows the weather uh, after eight hours, for instance. And then you can use a, a a scheduler in the cloud to continuously Ping. trigger the yeah to to like every half a minute check what's the weather in eight hours, right. and you always get the uh, a good. Uh, Prognosis. Cool. It's cool. Very versatile. Yeah. So any sort of sensor or anything that we can intelligently um, 
I guess, connect to, we can use as communication to the cloud, which really opens like the door for whatever you guys can imagine. But uh, yeah, it's exciting. Also, just because we hear a lot of really good ideas that we haven't yet implemented, but if you do end up implementing something like this, and you write a tutorial, or write a blog, right. um, send us an email or even tweet at us, and we'll make sure you get some exposure right. because Shout we love to see stuff like that. Uh, super fun, and maybe even some free hardware. So write write us some blogs, and we'll send you some free hardware. Works out. Uh, more questions or? Yeah, um, so I have a good comment. Uh, oh. I just figured I'd tell Rachel since Rachel's responsible for the box. Uh, so Sim UK is talking about your box, Rachel. Yes. Um, Sim UK says the box is actually better than some quote unquote real products. Whoa! Wow. Nice. So well, the good thing is, I mean, it's a real product, but yeah, I get I get what you're saying. It's a uh, this <laughs> this is a uh, it's a development tool. You don't really see that very often, so that's kind of cool. Cool. Yes. High praise. Yeah, mm -hmm. But but if you order the board, just forewarning, because I, w you might not get the box, right now. <laughs> 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 we are a little late on the box, so we'll we'll, we'll do get, our best. It, it's going to be implemented in the it's supply chain in a month or so. So no, no cool. worries, it's still cool. Um, but it is still cool, and if you want one, I'll send I you one. Like it. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see, um, Edwin. Do you have anything else? So we've sent a lot of a lot of people. Uh, who have more complex questions uh, to send them, to basically forward them over to uh, live stream at microchip.com. And right. I actually, I'm taking a look at the inbox. We see a few of you have yeah. actually asked those questions. So Good. I do want to give a shout out to the people on the chat that are answering some of the questions, which is great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. Thanks for the help. I really needed help. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, these are great questions. I did have a question regarding uh, would the code be available in MPLAB X for those using MPLAB X instead of the AVR Oh, for the platform? AVR part? Yeah. yeah. And I think it is, isn't it? Johan, do you well, want to answer this one? Sure. The the firmware is uh, like for just the base uh, base board, the AVR board. Yes, it's available in Amplex. If you want the stepper motor driver, that's only available on on uh, Atmos Start at the moment. Okay. But you can export to Amplab. Okay. When I think about it. So you could yeah, do. You can export yeah. It. yeah. Okay. So you can go into start.atmel.com, configure. Whatever your design you using Johan's example, download for MPLAB X and import it into MPLAB. Yeah, totally. Maybe cool. Yeah. Great. Uh, another question for you guys. If you have a moment. Let's go. Uh, the click, the click you're using, are there other clicks you could use uh, along with this board, or is it just specific to this one? You can use uh, almost any click, I think. Right. Uh, uh, <coughs> I, um, I haven't tested all the clicks, so I can't say that. But <laughs> uh, we're using the uh, Mic 3 bus. What are you doing down in that bunker? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're following the, the, the specifications of the uh, of the bus from Mic Electronica. So as right. long as they're both compatible, I don't see no reason why a click shouldn't work. Maybe. And almost all of our development tools now come with one, even this one. Um, it has a socket. You just plug it in. Right. Um, so that's really, really nice. I really like that because I don't like to solder. I'm not very good at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shaky hands. Sure. Uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, one more comment. Let's go. So, I, and I'm going to mispronounce your name. Sorry. Uh, Sakaline Steve um, says, bad. I would fancy to have a sensor to detect bugs which enter during the sunset and maybe shut the curtains and deploy preventative measures. Detect bugs. Yeah. Wow. So that, that the sensor part might be kind of like inter interesting, but you could certainly do something to uh, close those curtains. Absolutely, yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. And, then you and if you're preventing the message, it, it could be like a mosquito spray that's automatically sprayed, right, with having a step of Right, 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 right. right. Ooh. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That's a really sure. good idea. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. So um, I think uh, we're about ready to drop the survey link, aren't it's we? It's survey I do time. That, yeah. Cool. I go, I'll find the link. And <laughs> 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 All right, so Edwin's going to drop the survey link. So stay tuned. We're going to have, uh, you know, and, and uh, Rachel and Clifford are going to need you to have witty banter for another couple of minutes while we get that survey link in so everybody can get a chance to see it. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Um, actually, why don't we talk a little bit about how this is just the first day and we have tons. We actually have six oh, yeah. more live streams Whoa. this week. Yes, cool. I know. Working overtime <laughs> in Chandler, Arizona, but you'll it's okay. You'll Only be the host of all six, right? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> so what do we have tomorrow? So tomorrow is Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Day. That's exciting. Um, very exciting because it's the first time we've ever had a live stream about this topic. Obviously very cutting edge. We get a lot of questions. Right. I'm excited because I actually don't know that much about the topic. Right. Um, so in the morning, in Chandler morning, 
We'll be having uh, Motion Gestures, they're a company that focuses on adding motion gesture technology to edge nodes, so on hardware, and they run on our hardware. Um, and so they're going to be coming on to talk a little bit about how to do that. Cool. And give their perspectives on AI and what it means to like train and stuff like that. And then in the afternoon, we will be Skyping with Adafruit, so Lady Ada. Nice. Uh, and we'll be talking to them about how you can make AI as easy as Python. Ha. Ha. Python. So with their like circuit Python and um, yeah, and we'll be giving away hardware that has to do with that. So, uh, so that's I'm really two separate excited. live streams. Yeah, so two separate live streams. Um, one in the morning, one like a few hours later in right. the afternoon. Um, and cool. some really special guests. So I'm really excited. So not only is it the first time we're talking about this topic, but we're really like talking about it. Right. So <laughs> get 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 ready for that. Cool. Um, after that, security day. So we'll have a live stream with Microsoft Azure. Um, and then Thursday in the morning, we'll have Web Things. So that's that's like the alternative cloud. To cloud. Alternative. Really cool. I, I didn't know that much about it until we were rehearsing for the live stream, and I was like, this is really really cool. Nice. Um, so give that a Google. It's like Mozilla, Mozilla, like Firefox, Mozilla IoT Web Things. Give it a Google. Um, get excited. Uh, and then in the afternoon, it's going to be Maker Day with the Wizard of Make, Bob Ooh. Martin. We've had him on before. He's great. He's gonna be showing us how he used he used like a bunch of different maker-friendly platforms like Adafruit, Arduino, um, Microelectronica, and he combined them into this really cool BLE air quality monitor. Nice. Um, so he's gonna show us how he did that and tell us how we could do it ourselves. And then Friday we have uh, low power sensor networks. Uh, so we'll be talking about, we'll, we have guests from Kodo Technology mm -hmm. um, that make low power um, magnetic sensors and they're going to tell us a little bit about that. So that's really cool because um, we'll learn about how you can make those. And then we have our grand finale giveaway, Whoa. which is a ticket to Sensors Expo and there's also a ticket to Embedded Technologies Conference. So two free tickets and they're worth like two grand. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely, yeah. No, pretty it's pretty good. cool. I, That's fantastic. It's awesome that we were able to partner with them on this. Um, right. Yeah, definitely join that day and try to get that free prize because that's a pretty... That's a good one. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. Cool. So, so uh, let's see. i got one more question. Um, coming in from LinkedIn chat, the, the question was, uh, wh what's the physical interface to the computer for the AVR IoT board? And uh, you know it, it's been answered, but I wanted to basically ma make sure everyone else knew it's USB. <laughs> so the survey link is out. Cool. It is. A and so just one uh, one comment there, Wayne. Yeah. When it's USB, but you can send uh, USB messages using the UART interface yes. Yes, on mm. the board. So you don't have to know anything about USB to send USB messages. You just use printf or uh, UART print, and right. it appears as a as a message on the computer. Yep, yep. That's awesome. So uh, I think uh, this, is, this has yeah. been a fantastic live, everyone. Yeah. And uh, I look forward to doing it with you guys six more times this week. <laughs> so everyone join in. Um, and you know, someone mentioned that uh, the, the times that they see uh, on, the, uh, on the page, which is uh, microtrip.com slash IOT week, don't necessarily match up with the times that Rachel mentioned. So what we'll do is we'll make we'll make sure that they they all they all should be consistent. They should be. Uh, tomorrow, we're li we're going live two times, uh, as she mentioned. So tune in. And uh, Edwin, um, anything else? No, it was a great one. Uh, thanks for all the questions and feedback. Uh, good luck to everyone. Uh, please uh, complete the survey, and we'll try to get those uh, winners out there. Cool. Awesome. Back to you guys. And special thank you to Johan. Thanks Absolutely. for joining us. Oh, yeah, uh, thanks, Johan. It's awesome to hear your perspective. Thank you for staying late. I yeah, it's been it. great to be here. Yeah. Yes. Or not here. I'm in Norway, but uh, <laughs> digital. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has yeah. been great. We'll see you tomorrow. Great start. Thank you all.